Number 72. Calculate the mass of potassium cyanide ion that must be added to 100 milliliters of a solution to dissolve 2.0 times 10 to the negative second moles of silver cyanide, which is AGCN. Okay, so first off, um, they're asking to calculate the mass of potassium cyanide ion, but potassium cyanide is not an ion. It's a complex, uh, not a complex ion. It's a an ionic compound, right? Potassium cyanide is KCN. So we're just going to treat it like that. So we just want to find out what the mass of KCN is. Now, this question, we have to assume one thing, which I wrote down the information over here. Now, they did tell us that some of the cyanide was coming from a compound that was AGCN, right? They told us that we had 2.0 times 10 to the negative uh, second moles of the AGCN. So we have AGCN, and from there we have some amount of the moles, right? So in this case, I only care about the CN in this compound, right? And since there's only one cyanide in AGCN, and I could do a multiple uh, relationship that just says for every one AGCN, I only have one CN. So the moles that is for the whole compound, the 2.0 times 10 to the negative second moles, that's also for just the CN minus. Okay, so let me just move this down over here. Now, we can do it in terms of molarity. We could do it in terms of moles. I think it's just easier to just do it in terms of moles so that we don't have to do the extra step. Okay, so we have 2.0 times 10 to the negative, 20, uh, negative 2 moles of the CN, and that's coming from AGCN. Now, we want to know what the mass of the potassium cyanide is coming in in order to be added with the AGCN. So now I'm going to add the other compound to the mix. I'm going to add KCN. But remember, I only care about that cyanide, right? And this is the one that I don't know. So I'm just going to label it as X, right? So I'm just trying to find out how many moles of the CN minus is being added, and then I can find the grams. But now, when we add this together, right, and when these cyanides come together, what are we really forming? Well, that's why I brought up this KF value. Turns out that when you have silver and cyanide, you actually have two compounds that can be formed. You could form the ionic silver cyanide compound, or you could form the complex ion, AGCN2+. And I just brought up the KF value here. It's 1 times 10 to the 21st. That means that basically, if you can form this, you're going to do it. Because the higher the KF value, and remember, KF F stands for formation, you're forming this complex ion, the more of a positive value you are, that means at equilibrium, the more products you're going to have. And this is a product in our formation equation. So when these cyanides come together, chances are you're going to basically come out and form that complex ion, AGCN2. Okay. Well, in this case, we have two cyanides. So just pay attention to that because we're using our ratios. So this would have to be two times the amount. Now, if we're trying to dissolve all of these moles, that means that these moles are probably going to go straight into this compound. Keep in mind that the KF is a really high value. At the end of the day, chances are you're going to have just this compound. So two times what? Well, if the cyanide concentration was two, or the moles, was two times 10 to the negative second moles, that's the number that I'm going to be multiplying it by. Two times a 2.0 times 10 to the negative second. And now we have a total of 4.0 times 10 to the negative second moles of CN minus. But now where did that other two come from? Oh, it had to have come from this because gen, you know, if we actually just write this equation in terms of like a numeric function, X 
plus these amount of moles, 2.0 times 10 to the negative second, has to equal the total number of moles here, which is 4.0 times 10 to the negative second. And then if we just solve, it's just half, so you would get out 2 times 10 to the negative second moles. Okay, and remember, it's a one-to-one, -one, so this is the moles of the overall CN minus, and it's the moles for the KCN. So how do I go from moles to grams? Yep, we have to get that periodic table out. We gotta get Kelki out and just find out what that molar mass is of uh, KCN. So let's see, Kelki's out. KCN, uh, let's see, potassium is 39.1 plus a carbon plus a nitrogen. I'm just gonna multiply by the molar mass, which is 65.12, times that by two times 10 to the negative second. And I get roughly 1.3 grams. So 1.3 grams of KCN is what we need. And that's it, that's the final answer. Okay, what'd you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. And tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool YouTube channel. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. Thank you, and I will be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.